My Weirdastic School, Book Number One. Miss Banks pulls lots of pranks. Written by Dan Gutman. Pictures by Jim Pellot. Chapter Nine, The Prank of the Century. We walked a million hundred miles to room one two three. I couldn't wait to pull off the prank of the century. I was rubbing my hands together with excitement. That's what you do when you're excited. You rub your hands together. Nobody knows why. When we walked into the room, Miss Banks was waiting for us. For homework tonight, she said, "Please read the first five chapters in your social studies book, write an essay on what you did over summer vacation, and create a life-size animal out of items you have around the house." What? Just kidding," said Miss Banks. "There's no homework tonight, but starting tomorrow, we're going to work on multi-digit multiplication, the parts of speech, and blah 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 blah." That fake homework assignment was just another one of Miss Banks's pranks, of course. Well, she had her little fun, but now it was my turn. It was time to begin my counterattack. While Miss Banks was talking. I put my hand in the air. Do you have a question, AJ? She asked. No, I told her. I'm just pointing at the ceiling. A few kids giggled. But that wasn't my genius prank. No, I was going to start off easy. I wanted to warm up before I unleashed my genius prank to end all pranks. Very funny, AJ said, Miss Banks. As I was saying, starting tomorrow, we're going to work on adding and subtracting fractions and blah 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 blah. She passed out a handout. After I got mine, I put my hand up in the air again. Yes, AJ, Miss Banks asked. I don't get it. I said, What don't you get, AJ? I don't understand how they can take a tree and turn it into this thin sheet of paper. I said. A few kids giggled. Miss Banks stopped passing out her handout and looked at me for a moment. She seemed a little annoyed. Good. Neither do I, AJ. Muttered Miss Banks. Now back to our work for tomorrow. We're going to learn about the solar system, electricity, and blah 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 blah. I could see I was getting to her. I looked at the clock on the wall. It was four minutes before two o'clock. Perfect. It was time for me to move in for the kill. It was time to give Miss Banks a taste of her own medicine. Here's the awesome prank I told the gang about during lunch. At exactly two o'clock, everybody in the class was going to drop our books on the floor, all at the same time. It would be hilarious. Even Andrea and Emily agreed to do it. This was going to be great. Blah 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 blah," said Miss Banks. As she spoke, we were all peeking at the clock. It was three minutes before two o'clock. I piled my books up on top of my desk. Blah 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 blah," said Miss Banks. It was two minutes before two o'clock. I looked over at Ryan, and he looked over at me. It was hard not to laugh, thinking about the great prank we were about to pull off. It was one minute before two o'clock. This was going to be awesome. We all watched the clock as the second hand moved closer to the twelve. Alexia gave me a quick thumbs up, and I gave her one back. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Tick tick tick. It was time. As the second hand reached the twelve, I swept my arm across my desk. My books went flying. Everybody's books went flying. Bam! All the books hit the floor. Ah! Miss Banks swung around and screamed. The noise took her by surprise. I thought she was going to jump out of her skin. Okay, I've had it with you kids! She shouted. That's the last straw. Huh? What a straw! 
laws have to do with anything. Miss Banks looked really mad. I thought she was going to put us in detention for the rest of our lives, but she didn't. I quit, she shouted, and then she walked out of the room, slamming the door behind her. Wow, that's Mom upside down. It was so quiet in room 123, you could have heard a pin drop. That is, if anybody brought a pin to school with them. But who brings the pins to school? Then everybody started cheering. We did it, said Ryan, giving me a high five. We pranked her good. Yeah, I said, Miss Banks can dish it out, but she can't take it. I guess we showed her, said Alexia. Revenge is sweet. It felt great to get back at Miss Banks. But then little Miss Wet Blanket had to chime in. But wait, what are we going to do now? asked Andrea. We don't have a teacher. They're going to have to hire a new teacher. Hmm, no teacher. Ryan, Michael, and I snapped into action and did what we always do when there's no grown-up in the room. We got up on our desks and shook our butts at the class. It was hilarious. And you'll never believe who walked through the door at that moment. Nobody. How many times do I have to tell you? People can't walk through doors. You should really pay more attention when you're reading. But you'll never believe who walked through the doorway. It was Miss Banks. Eek! screamed Alexia. She's back. As I was a saying, Miss Banks told us, starting tomorrow, we're going to work on natural resources and ecosystems and... Wait a minute, I interrupted her. You said that you quit. Yeah, everybody agreed. Quit, said Miss Banks with a laugh. Don't be silly. I was just pranking you. You're stuck with me for the rest of the year. No! Well, that's pretty much what happened. Maybe Miss Banks will stop pulling pranks on us all the time. Maybe I'll get some real brownies, donuts, gum, and Oreos that aren't filled with toothpaste. Maybe a truck full of quadrilaterals will fall on Andrea's head. Maybe I'll learn her to spell Splurgle and Spinkheimer. Maybe I'll run away to Antarctica and go live with the penguins. Maybe an asteroid will strike the Earth tonight so I won't have to go back to fourth grade. Maybe somebody will invent a voice-activated paper towel dispenser. Maybe we'll find a sleuth lerpa. But it won't be easy.